Hey guys, and welcome to Respect Your Intellect. I'm John, and in this video, we'll be talking about the conspiracy theory of chemtrails. Let's get started. All right, so let's start by defining what the terms mean. Chemtrails stand for chemical trails, and they imply that an aircraft is spraying chemicals. Contrails, on the other hand, stand for condensation trail, and only means that the aircraft is leaving a trail of water-based condensation behind it as it flies. The chemtrail conspiracy theory seems to originate from a US Air Force strategy proposal in 1996 that put forth the idea that weather modification could help maintain military dominance. In 2005, the US Air Force clarified that this paper doesn't represent their military policy, practice, or capabilities. Today, this chemtrail conspiracy theory is based on the belief that high-flying aircrafts that leave long-lasting trails in the sky are actually spraying other chemical substances. The main way that they try to differentiate between a normal contrail and a chemtrail is by how long they last in the sky. They also imply that this release of chemicals could be for weather modification, population control, and uh, chemical warfare, and that they cause respiratory illnesses in the population. Some people also go as far as claiming that the chemtrails are meant to keep people dumb. Because these claims have been so persistent, the scientific community looked at the claims many times but never found any evidence that the longer lasting trails were any different than the ones that dissipate more quickly. You know what happens though with conspiracy theories, all these reports were just used as further evidence of a cover up instead. Here are some of the big problems with this conspiracy theory and its claims. 1. The paper proposal was leaked in 1996, but there are clear long-lasting contrails during World War II that these conspiracy theorists never address. 2. They claim that the crisscross patterns are also an indication of the difference between chemtrails and contrails, but they fail to realize that the grid patterns that supposedly make it a chemtrail very often happen at airports with commercial flights and passengers, which makes no sense if you're trying to keep this a secret. Three. They claim that pictures of commercial airplanes with barrels instead of passengers are further evidence of chemtrails, but those are just tanks of water to simulate passenger weight for flight tests. 4. They claim that some videos of airplanes clearly dropping a water-like substance is actually a chemtrail, but those are mostly planes jettisoning some of their fuel in order to make emergency landings. The reason they do this is to reduce stress during landing, especially if some of the gear on the aircraft is malfunctioning. 5. They claim that government-funded cloud seeding programs and climate engineering are further evidence of the chemtrail conspiracy, but that's just normal research meant to improve and benefit our daily lives. So now let's talk about what these trails actually are. The actual term is contrails. When airplanes burn their fuel for propulsion, it leaves a combination of carbon dioxide and water vapor, just like cars do. When this hot and humid air coming out of the exhaust mixes in with very cold air, most often at high altitudes, the water vapor from the exhaust condenses into small droplets or ice crystals that form visible clouds. Some droplets could also form in the engine because of the small impurities in the fuel. This condensation process is the same as when you exhale in cold weather and form a small cloud from your mouth. This trail forming process also takes a small amount of time, so that's why we usually see the trails forming a small distance behind the aircraft rather than something coming directly out of it as if it was spraying. Plus, they're always aligned with the engines or wingtips, and there are no reservoirs there to hold any chemicals. Now, as far as the duration goes, how long these trails or clouds last is entirely dependent on weather conditions. If the air is saturated with water, it won't be able to absorb these water droplets for a while and the cloud will last longer. This is the same principle as sweating in a jungle where your sweat doesn't evaporate because the air is already holding the maximum amount of water molecules that it can. However, if the air is dry, then the clouds will be absorbed much faster by the air so they'll dissipate more quickly. So depending on the weather conditions, the clouds form could last from a few minutes up to many hours. If the air is completely saturated, the cloud created by the contrail would actually become just another normal cloud. If the wind is strong enough, this cloud could also end up spanning several miles wide. These trails being solely dependent on weather conditions is the reason why we see contrails of any duration coming from any aircraft. For example, it happens frequently that contrails last for hours even on passenger flights, and a long duration is claimed to be a chemtrail by the conspiracy theorists. 
Let's get back to what constitutes the contrail. If the water vapor froze and formed ice crystals, their different sizes will also make them fall at different rates. This cascade of ice crystals and vapor will show as a vertical spread when you look at it. Then you have the winds that can contribute to a horizontal spread as well. Another way that contrails could form is with the vortex created at the wing's tips as it generates lift. This vortex swirls the air and persists for a little while even after the aircraft passed. If the air is humid enough, it can also condense the water in the air into tiny droplets in the same way as the exhaust. You can sometimes even see this process happen on space shuttle launches. The process that forms contrails happens much more frequently at higher altitudes where the air is colder. So this clip shows one of the most common contrails that could be mistaken for a chemtrail. Here we have a jet taking off. Take note of how hot the air is behind it. Now as it takes off, you can see contrails forming from the wingtips even at a very low altitude. This is because the air is more humid and the vortex at the wingtips makes the water condense as it swirls. In humid winter conditions, you can sometimes also see contrails form while the aircraft is still on or near the airstrip. Now, although their composition is harmless, they still have an effect on the environment. These contrails actually increase cloud cover in some areas by up to 20%. This means that it can contribute to climate change, so we're currently studying the effects in more detail. We might be able to use it selectively to help control global warming, or we might be able to change the way we do things to also help. The results we have up to now seem to point to a net positive though. In other words, a warming effect. So as you can see, you don't have to be more scared of contrails than a normal cloud. We just name the resulting clouds differently if they didn't occur naturally. Once you understand why they happen and why they can last anywhere from minutes to hours, there really isn't much space left for a conspiracy once the explanations are understood. If you like this video and want more content like this, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions about what you'd like to talk about, put it down in the comments below or come follow me on Twitter or Facebook, links are in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching and remember, respect your intellect.